Okay, many of you might be brand new to Affinity Designer. Some of you might be working with uh, other vector programs and you're familiar with certain things that happen there. What I want to cover now is just this layers effect button at the bottom here, which is commonplace in all vector editing software. However, the unique thing um, is this 3D button here. It's got some features that are really cool. Um, we might be probably familiar with bevel and emboss and think it, it functions basically the same. But I'm going to show you the difference. So let's start off, uh, we're going to do bevel and emboss and see how that works. So what I've done is, let me just clear this out. Um, I'm going to just take a single line like that and drop it in there. Now, I'm putting a single line here with quite a bit of thickness, but I've got a, a video that I do showing you how to get to do what I'm going to do now. I'm, so I'm not going to explain it. You go to pressure here. Um, if I grab this button here, it's going to thin proportionately because it will grab both buttons if I move it. Oops, no, it, it hasn't. <laughs> That's interesting. There we go. Okay, so it does it, both of them. But if I grab, click on one button, uh, let's click again on it. Yeah, so it disengages. Oh, that looks like a very famous uh, symbol, logo. Not intended at all. Um, so what I want to show you is, say this is the object. As I mentioned again, I did a video on getting shapes and different shapes using the, the stroke, etc. One of the things that you need to do is to be able to get it now to be an outline and a fill is to expand it. I have a shortcut key, but I'll show you in the layers menu. It's expand stroke. Okay, mine is E, so I'm going to just click there. It's going to take that stroke and convert it into an outline and fill. Okay, there you see it's now got an outline and a full color. And I'm doing that specifically so that I can show you the two tools that I'm going to speak about, which is the emboss bevel tool and the 3D tool and how they're similar, but the 3D tool gives you so much flexibility. So this came about when a, a, a client wanted to have a, a kind of a, you know, 3D look and have a bit of shine on it and so forth. So this was the way that I did it. I mean, you probably could create it and save it as a style, but I'm going to show you from the ground up. So I'm going to go layers and we're going to start off with bevel and emboss. Before I activate that, if we look at bevel and emboss here, it's got four different types that you have here and they literally affect the object that you're working on differently, creating shadow folding in different areas. So we'll just go through them quickly, but let me switch it on possibly. Okay, the default one on pillow, you can see light coming from the top. There's a bit of a haze shadow over there. Um, I'm going to move this radius up so you can see its excessive effect. So that is 100% and then I'll pull it down. So this is literally creating the impression that light is coming from the top area and that's why it's dark down here. But you see it, it kind of doesn't make sense in that the light is casting a shadow here even though the light is coming from here. But we assume, those who know about 3D modeling, we assume that is what we refer to as ambient occlusion. Giving you an idea that this object is close to the surface it's sitting on. And that naturally creates a, a dark um, sort of undersurface shadow. So let's assume that is ambient occlusion because the lighting direction doesn't make sense there. Okay, then from pillow, let's go to emboss, which is the popular one. So there it kind of makes sense. Light would come from the top, it would create a little shadow underneath. Then let's go to outer. That kind of takes away the, the reflectivity or the light on this area, but it still shows the shadow. And this is the one I'm going to be working with inner, which literally will take the light coming down, but doesn't show a shadow. Okay, because in, in most cases, when you're working in 2D packages, you're not too interested in showing shadows on everything, because if you're doing this effect, every object must reflect in the other object and drop shadows on them like a real 3D world. This is creating the expression of, of depth on a particular object. In this case, the light shines here. We, we kind of, our brains can say this thing is round. This object is sort of round in this area. Um, and what is nice is you see this little specular highlight area shows that there's light going up this way. So if I push it further up, we're going to have that kind of look. And that for me would be a bit more realistic. So let's drop down to what soften is. Soften gives you a relationship 
of this particular reflectivity, how the light is reflecting. So if I go soften, it softens it there. It makes that light almost as it's coming through a diffuser. The profile, very interesting feature. Um, so whatever you give here, you can press invert and it will do it the other way. But if you click on profile, these uh, profile areas, you could draw it on here also, but these profile areas literally you could almost cut if you if you come around this corner here if you say we go from the top area to the apex here and then from the apex down to the other side this area will be doing it from that side to the apex and in this case now it will go angle up and angle down here to form a shop let me show you what it looks like so if i click on there um, i'm going to have to just move the lighting a bit okay I'm going to put it on 100 so you can see what I mean. So the light is shining on this side and it shadows here. But this inclination goes up there and then it goes down the side. So if I take this now, which is the direction of the light, and I move it around the other side, you can see what's happening with it. Okay, so if I move it about there and see if I can get more light, um, uh, sort of get on both sides. But you, you get the idea. It's running to a crest there and in that area. So now if I go here and I choose this next one, we're going to go from the edge. And it, if you look at this, it's like a cross section. It's going to go up and sort of to a tip and then sort of sound. Let's look at that. It gives you that. It's got this little nick over here. This one would probably dig, uh, dig deep in there. So this one, let me just move this, this light so we can see. Okay, so, so this has got a kind of a... From the top, it, it does a dig in and to the edge. Okay, so that's what, what these things create. There we've got a, it, if we look at this here, it's literally, if we cut this in half and look from this side here, we'll see this is halfway and the other part will go about that side. And then this one has that effect. Okay, so you, you see what, what effect this has this. And this can be modified. I could take this and pull it out there. And what's happening is it's, this is literally a cross section of that area and half of it. Okay, so that's just to show you there. I'm going to just remove the profile so we'll have it around. And let me add the light and just move this light right back top over here. Okay, so this is the highlight, which is this light area. And this is the shadow. So if I take the shadow and I make it less opaque, um, uh, let me take it there or even move the the type down to normal. Uh, let's see what happens over there. Uh, let me choose a color that's lighter gray. Ah, there we go. Can you see that the color at the bottom over there? Okay, so that is that is kind of the choice of a shadow where we're showing a light will show as white and the shadow will come in as whichever color we're choosing. So that's the flexibility we have there. If I go to screen and I make this yellow now, you'll see this light should turn or green or yellow, let's put it there. You see it, it, it changes according to how I'm defining the light. Okay, so that's the, the, the power of how the uh, layer effects, specifically with bevel and emboss. Now what 3D does, it takes it to the next level, because in 3D world, we speak about the ability to have ambient light which is light shining all over then we also have light that reflects off it like a, a you know a highlight it's called specular light and those features are not available in bevel but they are available in the 3d that's why i believe 3d is um, a, a much more superior way of doing the same stuff uh, modifying objects than you would do um, using the bevel and emboss. However, in most cases of people that have been using t 2D software all along with having a like a drop shadow and all that stuff, they've been often using a bevel and emboss. But if you use 3D and you want drop shadows, you, you can get there from, you know, out the shadow still. So let's switch that off and let's get to 3D. So I'm going to switch 3D on and 3D pretty much has a, a similar kind of, you know, thing to the emboss. It kind of looks the same. But here, let's look and we take it up, okay. There we see we have a, a similar kind of rounding of it. Uh, the light, if we take the light to the top, similar area there. But we have a few other things. Soften, exactly the same. You can see soften has that same effect on the light. 
uh, if you're looking at opacity, opacity is, is almost similar to choosing in the bevel one, we had those different types where you could flip through them. So the opacity could also take away the, the, the sort of uh, strength of the light on that area. Okay, then the profiles exactly the same. If you click on the profiles, they'll be doing quite a bit the same. I'm, I'll just move it here. Um, so the profiles do exactly the same. I'll remove that. Here is where the excitement happens. Okay, so I'm going to move this light, say about there. And this direction of the light center here is coming right on top of the object. Here, if I move it here, it's coming from this area. So if you look at a, a clock here, 12 o'clock, 1, 2, 3, around the clock, this is how it is. So if I come here, it's taking the light from directly on top. If I move up there, it's taking the light from sort of out this way as it brings it across. Okay. Look at the diffuse. If I pull back diffuse, it's pretty much doing nothing here. But the specular is the one. Let me show you. If I pump this up, you'll see this will start getting a bit almost like a, a higher shine on it. Okay, so specular is that kind of white reflection of the light that comes there. And now we have additional one that is shininess. Now this is shiny all over the surface. You're going to have almost this kind of gray metal look. But if you have it that it's just a little bit of tweak. You can see now you can create a bit of highlight there. We can pull it back. So now you can create, I'm going to move the light a bit more. Let's see where we have the light there. So now I can work with the shininess of the object. I can work with the specular, which is this, this bright reflectivity. And maybe I should just move this out. Um, Maybe pull it back a bit more subtle. But can you see now we, we have the ability to have a little bit more control over how the light is falling on there. And then the specular color, we can make that color what we want to. If we go for a yellow, that's what we can do. Any sort of color, we can highlight that too if we want to make that specular color. What that means is the light that's shining on there is a, in this case, what's this? Uh, purple, purple light. So we can modify that as a, a light there. Here's the other thing. The ambient light is the overall, almost like a global illumination. It's light that just generally lights up the scene. So if I, if I put it up there, in some cases you'll find it as a different effect. This is a total black object, so it's not having that much effect in there. Uh, so this would be, in some cases, you would see the color change in the whole object. Okay, if I go now, I'm going to just change this color of this object maybe to a bit of a lighter one and let's move ambient. Can you see what ambient does? It, it adds bright, bright light around. So if I had a, a red object like that, you see the black is just absorbs all the light. But if I had a red object and I add ambient light, you see the effect that it has. If I change the ambient color even to a, let's say a, a green tone to it. When I push it up, you'll see it, it will have a bit of an overbearing kind of sort of tinge of, of this particular color. Okay, but I'm going to push this right back to the light green or, or the white one. And then this is the last one that I want to show you where I think it's so powerful. So I'm going to move this light to the top. This light is shining from the top. But let me show you how I can go in, which is different to the emboss. It is the one where I'm adding a additional light. So if I come in here and I add a second light, I take the second light down at the bottom. Now you can see the light shining from the bottom here. That is where this excels. I can add as many lights as I want to. If I go back to the first light and move the first light, say about, about there, click on that second light I've created, maybe move it down here at the bottom. But I want to change this one's color to maybe a bit of yellow or maybe, yeah, make it yellow. So I change this one's color at the bottom to a bit of yellow. Then I can take add a third light that I'm going to point from this side. And I'm going to make this, um, maybe make it a blue color. Okay. So I can add a bluish tinge from there. From the second light, which I put at the bottom, I've got this yellowy tinge. And the first light, which comes on the top, I have that as white. So this is where this tool, and, and it's worthwhile experimenting. Let me just show you something very interesting. If I go and I change the primary stroke that I'm 
designing yeah I change it to a I want to make a gold gold kind of color okay the ambient light is a bit too bright and I'm going to just take this right back to white again drop the ambient light a bit down and to make this into a, a gold object now this is it's too pure to have gold like this so don't know if you know this but in the color wheel here where you see noise um, if you click on this noise it will show opacity yours might show opacity here that you'll be working with but you just click on the opacity here and it will change to noise and we can add a bit of noise on that area to create a bit of a gold effect and then just tweak around here you know go and do a bit of your um, modification to see how you can create maybe a, a less sort of shininess there um, and then you could use modify the radius to be a bit more sensitive on that area and of course tweak let's go on this one here um, I think that is probably a bit too excessive let's see where we can come with okay I'm going to pull this down uh, let's push that up just click on there and do a bit of a rounding uh, you get the idea you can modify that let me re rather remove that such um, radius maybe drop it down and the actual color of it maybe we should make it uh, let's get more of a goldy tone on that okay so there we are able to create uh, maybe put some ambient light on that we're now able to use ambient light I put in three lights we can put any number of lights uh, showing different colors from different sides we're able to create the shininess the speculiness so I would like to encourage you to fiddle around with the emboss features but also try and master the the 3d features because where this comes in handy is if you go and you can take this and save it as a style if we go in here let's see if we can save this as a style let's uh, add style category um, okay let's see if we can add a style add style from selection okay so there we've got a style then I can remove this and if I take it again my line will be the same now because I still haven't changed it over there and I press E so maybe I've got this object I've got this object that I want to turn around then I can just go and take that put that there take that there there I've got two beautiful designs and that is using the 3D uh, layer effects that we have in that area okay so get to use the emboss uh, if you again if you need here yeah, if you need a drop shadow or something then just go you can go back in to that area let's see here yeah, and go to outer shadow and just drop some sort of shadow let's see if we're dropping a nice sort of offset um, we can change angles and all that but I'm sure that should be fine just to get the idea um, maybe change the angle yeah that would be great so if we do that we are able then to add the shadows that we otherwise would have got when we use bevel and emboss automatically so maybe the next week or two fiddle with bevel emboss and 3d um, find your way around there and then add some nice character and some nice depth and dimension to your your artwork so have a fantastic day and god bless